Hello and welcome to Product Momentum, where we hope to entertain, educate, and celebrate the amazing product people who are helping to shape our communities way ahead. My name is Paul Gable, and I'm the Director of Product Innovation at ITX. Along with my co-host, Sean Flaherty, and our amazing production team and occasional guest host, we record and release a conversation with a product thought leader, writer, speaker, or maker who has something to share with the community every two weeks. Paul, awesome day today, man. Gabby Bufram knocked it out of the park. We just had a great conversation about product leadership and getting teams together, rallied around a vision. What did you take away from the conversation we just had with Gabby? Yeah, you got to be, you got to take perspectives. Like you have to make purposely make time to separate yourself from the day to day so that you're not the fish looking at the water. And exactly. Like take some perspective. It was a great conversation with Gabby. Yeah, Gabrielle does a great job of bringing the context into conversations because just because you wrote it down, just because you have it in a mm. PowerPoint on a share drive doesn't mean that everybody knows it. Human beings are not Wikipedia articles and they're not just going to remember right. everything you say. So I think having the intuition to know when to talk about what is really important as a skill to develop early in your career because yeah. you need to have those conversations. Sometimes they're hard. And you don't want to share everything all the time because that just creates anxiety. You have yep. to figure this this concept of overlaying time horizons with what to communicate is very important. Yeah. It's Powerful. A, it's a very it's a very human people focused problem that we're trying to solve. And I think it really comes through in the talk that we just had with Gabby. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. Let's get after it. Let's get after it. Great. Well, hey everybody. Welcome again to Product Momentum. We're here live at the New York Product Conference with Gabrielle Bufrem. Welcome. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. For those who didn't hear your talk or maybe haven't met your work online before, can you share a little bit about what you're working on these days and where people can find you? Yeah, absolutely. So my talk was called Confessions of a First Head of Product. And it's all the lessons that I wish I had learned before. Now actually looked at years back or years later as a product coach. So now I coach product leaders, normally VPs of product, CPO, heads of product. Yep. And it's all the lessons I wish I had known and things that I have seen help my clients a lot. Amazing. Yeah. It was it was a great talk. I, you know, one of the things that stood out to me was your sense of timing. And what I mean by that is you have a very clear sense of when certain conversations need to happen in the life of an organization where Many, many people would say, well, we wrote it down one time and saved it on a share drive or we yeah. had we had a meeting or there's a but these these are really intuitive human conversations. Mm -hmm. And you pulled out this this idea of reading the room and, and knowing when a group conversation happens and when an individual conversation happens. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how you learned those lessons and what that means in, a, in the context of a product organization? Yeah, absolutely. So I think I've been pretty surprised even by like how much leaders are like, oh, well, we wrote it one time. Or like, we talked about this once. And like, how do people like not know? And the, right. the truth is like, we talk about it all the time. We think about it all right. the time. But whenever we're communicating, we need to put ourselves in the shoes of the people we're communicating with mm -hmm. and really understand like, what do they want to learn? What do they want to hear? And how do we communicate it out to them in a mm. way that makes sense? Right. So I say that like communication is only effective when it's actually heard uh -huh. by other people and interpreted. So just because you're saying it doesn't mean it's landing it. Right. And most problems are people problems. Yeah. And a lot of them are solved by really good communication. Yeah. But th there is this dichotomy of how much do you share now versus how much? Because when you're trying to build a product, you have to think about the very long term in order to architect it well up front. But you got to get stuff delivered now. That was yeah. a key. That was a key point in your message. Like yeah. you have to deliver. Yeah. So how do you balance that sort of dichotomy? It's a challenge. Yeah, definitely a challenge. I think the the key things for me are having a really strong product vision. So having a very clear like what does the world look like three to five years from now when our product is changing the likes of the people we care about, and making sure everyone knows that everyone knows who we're building for. Everyone yeah. knows that future, and they can get excited. But also getting people really excited about the boring stuff that they need to do like today. That's right. actually like setting the stage for that thing to actually be able to happen. Yep. So I do think there's like some levers you need to pull and it does depend, right? It depends on like which stage the company is at. It depends how the morale of the team is sure. going. And it's about like communicating both, but I would say mostly communicating about what the team needs to do right, right now. now. Yeah. Yeah. But one of the things that stood out to me that we were chatting before we hit record uh, yeah. a few days ago, and, yeah. and one of the things that really stuck with me was your idea of as you grow up through leadership to to higher levels in the organization, yeah, you really have to become much more in tune with the idea of 
us problems, yeah. my problems, yeah. their problems. Yeah. And it's a learned skill. And I will admit I've learned that the hard way. My yeah. my default is maximum transparency. Yes. And yeah. that can be a risk yeah. the higher you go in an organization. Not always the right choice because then you create anxiety for people. Exactly. It's not, nece- it's not ne- necessary in the moment. Right. Yes. right. Exactly. So I'm wondering, can you unpack that a little bit more about how as you've grown in leadership and, and dealing with CPOs and heads of product, yeah. how do you coach them along those lines of learning what to communicate and when and, and what that means in, in the context of the scale that you're at? I think it's like four questions that I ask. This is a great question, by the way, because it really is about, and I'm the same way. Like I love transparency. I love involving people. And to be like super transparent, again, I want to make sure people know that that's a good thing, right? Yeah. Like, so start with the intention is amazing. You normally are going to get great things from involving people. They feel bought in. They feel part of it. It's great. Right. But you need to figure out the how. And I think that is where um, it, it can be tricky, yeah. right? So one of the core things I talk about a lot is that you need to understand and ask yourself the question, why am I communicating this? Excellent. What am I trying to achieve mm. with this? Yeah. And if the answer doesn't really feel like something that's helpful right. to your report or to someone on your team, then you need to ask yourself, is it actually the right thing for right. me to communicate this right now? Or is there a different way that I can say it yeah. so that they still feel involved, but it's not either frustrating or disconcerting or unnerving for people. Right. And it's not about being deceptive or even coercive. Yeah. Human beings just aren't Wikipedia articles. We don't need to be comprehensive. And sometimes it's actually counterproductive. Yeah. To, to, Too to much be, detail. Exactly. Paralyzing. Yeah. yeah. And I talk a lot about like being kind of like the shit umbrella for the team. right? Like, <laughs> and I, I think it's like as a leader, like you need to you need to protect your team a lot of the time. I mean, if I was to tell people everything that I heard when I was running product, I don't think they would be there anymore. You right. know? But I needed to filter out and be like, what is a me problem? What yeah. is a us problem? And what's yep. a them problem? Yeah. And of course, their problems are my problems, too. Yep. But the me problems I need to keep to myself. Yeah. <laughs> since, since you went there, I have to share one quick anecdote. Yeah. The the shit umbrella is is kind of correlated to a leadership metaphor that my first executive officer in the Navy used yeah. called called a dung beetle leadership mindset. Mm-hmm. Dung beetles keep it from rolling downhill. Yeah. Unless, you know, it's it's going to roll downhill unless you stop it. So yeah. be a dung beetle leader. Yes, exactly. I like that. Yeah. That is great. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. The, the other thing that really came out to me in your talk was the idea of context changing as you grow up. So a lot of the content of leadership tactics and communication. Yeah doesn't change it's your context that changes around your perspective it. yeah yeah exactly like i love that slide you had you had the fuzzy dots and then the yeah. focus dots right and it's like you know it's hard to see the water when you're the fish yeah exactly so you have to you have to find ways to take you have to purposely find ways to take different perspectives yeah i i, I got i thought that was profound yeah oh awesome and yeah. i yeah. think like yeah it's honestly like a core Part of why I love my job today is yeah. that as a product leadership coach, I get to give perspective to yeah. people. It's all that I do because I am on the outside. And like a lot of companies are like, oh, we want you to be here like three days a week. And I'm like, no, I yeah. can't be because if I'm there for that long, I'll start adopting your culture. Mm, I'll be too inside and yeah. I'll actually lose a lot of the value that I have to you wow. from being cool. this outside perspective. So I do think it's, yeah, having a coach really helps. Yeah. And it really helps to when we were talking about the other piece around like the you problem and the them problem and the you both problem. Like a lot of product leaders don't have people they can share these problems with. Yeah. They can't go to their CEO and be like, I have zero clue what to do here. Like that's like not really an option, you know? Part of the reason why I think like product people like having other product people as friends. That is a thing. Yep. And we all hang out together and it's great. But also part of the reason why it's very interesting when you have someone that you can share these things with and actually get perspective. Absolutely. And one of the things that you were very open about was the idea that at some point you're going to be embarrassed about where you were. And yeah. and as you grow up, we should take stock of where we've come from because it yeah. informs who we are today. today. Yeah. And I'm, I'm wondering if you could share, you know, sort of the the journey that you've been on to get to where you are and, and if that can be made practical if we're still early in our career. We're still product owner, our team, yeah. product manager. Yeah. How do, how do these lessons apply? Should we start cataloging things, thinking about conversations differently? Do, do you have to wait until you're a CPO mm. to start thinking these things? Yeah, I think the answer is definitely no. <laughs> you definitely don't right. need to wait until you're a CPO. I would say 
Yeah, some of the core things for me were, and and I think they all came from like what innately felt right. So yeah. I, I think I did invest a lot in things that I loved. Yeah. So I always loved diversity. So I've actually done like nine industries so far, which some people are like, what? I've only done one industry. Is that right or wrong? And I'm like, well, it depends. Like I like the diversity and the yeah. diversity allowed me to learn different things. So I think I tell people all the time, like, before working for anyone else, you work for yourself. Right. Yeah. So you need to figure out like where do you want to go and what are the things that you can do in order to get that. So I'd say saying yes to things a lot was a way. So like people are like, oh, would you move to Singapore to help us there? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll move. Other people were like, you're insane. Like you're just moving. Mm -hmm. You just moved to Paris. Like now you're moving to Singapore. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll move. Not forever. Like, and it'll be a great opportunity. Right. I also think another thing is like seeking out mentors. Right. Yeah. I actually, I, I feel so lucky. Like I have incredible mentors that have honestly like pushed me to go beyond what I even thought was possible. And they've just been like incredible sounding words to me. And now I'm very proud to call them friends yeah. too. There's, so, there's a lot to that adage about the five people you spend the most time with. And yes. Where you focus your, your own personal growth and learning. Yeah. And I couldn't agree more. You got to invest in the self. Yeah. Because you if you don't take care of number one, how could you possibly be leading yes. you know, others? Yes. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And I think I, I always tell people and I ask my clients this all the time. What's the story that you want to tell? Mm -hmm. What are we trying to tell here? And what do we have in order to tell the story? And what yeah. do we need to go get? Right. Yeah. Human beings are storytelling creatures. We don't understand the world through spreadsheets and facts and figures. We understand the world through the stories that we tell each other and that mm -hmm. experience, the shared experience. It's re and I, I love the way that you bring such a human element to these conversations that are so often just riddled with vanity metrics and, and scaling and up and to the right. And while those things are important to track, not they have their place, totally. but it's, this is a people, you, you said it before, people this is a business. people problem. Yeah. All, everything is yes. all problems are people problems. We all talked problems. about that yesterday. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd say too, like one exercise I actually have my clients do is I have them catalog what brings them joy mm. and energy mm. and what takes away joy and energy. And it's a simple list. Yeah. And I think people should do that all the time. Mm. And that can help you guide what you want to do next. Yeah. If you're like, well, I'll be honest, like when I did a lot of product stuff, like I wasn't, I don't think I was like the best PM ever. You know, I just wasn't. And I definitely learned that when I started managing some like really, really epic PMs, but I had other skills. I was a good communicator. I loved coaching people and mentoring them. So those were always on my happy energy column. Right. And there were other things that were not. And there isn't a right or wrong answer, but there's a right or wrong answer for you. Absolutely. Totally agree. For sure. Well, thank you for joining us, yeah, Gabby. Thank you for it's been a great conversation me. and your keynote was spectacular. Where can thank people you. find out about what you do and yeah, I learn think more? The, yeah, totally. The best way would be LinkedIn mm -hmm. or my website, which mm -hmm. is just GabrielleBuffram.com. Yeah, we'll yeah. put both the links on the page for the website and Amazing. for the podcast. And yeah, awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for, for taking the time. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Of course. Really learned a lot. This is so fun. Yeah. yeah thank you. Cheers. Well, that's it for today. In line with our goals of transparency and listening, we really want to hear from you. Sean and I are committed to reading every piece of feedback that we get. So please leave a comment or a rating wherever you're listening to this podcast. Not only does it help us continue to improve, but it also helps the show climb up the rankings so that we can help other listeners move, touch, and inspire the world just like you're doing. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next episode. Mm -hmm.